Hey guys, thanks so much for stopping by Creator Best Life for a brand new video. Today I am coming to you with TV shows with the best character development. I know I've talked about character development a few times on this channel and I wanted to include some examples of characters that have really great character development you've probably heard of and or seen a lot of these shows that I, and movies that I'm about to list out and I hope that you guys enjoy this. Now today obviously we're in a totally different place. This is the kitchen. I have some veggies and food that I need to prep because we're having shrimp fried rice tonight and I got to make some brown rice for myself, white rice for Matt, and then he's going to put it all together. Sorry again for the extra noise. We've got the AC running because it is 80 degrees in Michigan now. And also we have the dishwasher running. So sorry in advance for all of that, but that's why I have this mic on. Regardless, we're going to jump right into this video. So anyways, while I chop this onion, that is right. This knife is dull. So while I switch knives and chop this onion, I'm going to talk to you guys about the first show on my list. And you can probably see my list to my left um, that I'm going off of. But it was really fun to make. And the first TV show that I'm going to bring up is The Walking Dead because Matt and I are re-watching it from the very beginning because we are not caught up. And we just wanted to fully get the feel of it before we catch up on episode, not episode, season 11, which is their final season and I don't know if the last episode came out or not but of course they already announced so many of their spinoffs and so, which is kind of crazy because it takes away the suspense of the show considering that the fun of it was finding out who died if that's fun um, but you never know who's going to still be around but if they announce the spinoffs and you know certain characters get their own spinoff it's like oh that character is still alive so now i know that you know some of these people that i thought would die are still around and that's okay so regardless we're going to talk about the character development though so first up we have rick rick grinds everyone loves rick uh, kind of so rick started out as like this protective person because he was a cop. I thought it was really interesting the way that he went throughout the show. And I do know that because of, I like to read spoilers too. So also disclaimer, if you don't like spoilers, you probably shouldn't watch this video. If you haven't seen any of these shows and you want to eventually watch them. So anywho, um, I know that Rick dies in season nine because Carl died in season eight. Very sad. I didn't like that at all. They kill off all of my favorite people. Anywho, um, so Rick started off as this really protective character. He like made sure that he took care of people and everything. And then gradually, you know, as trauma continued to enter his life from this poke apocalyptic world then he becomes ruthless and he just kills people without hesitation which is why and then you know he's pulled back by carl his son a few times and then he ends up um being protective and caring again and then of course carl dies so now he's like i want revenge i don't care about any of the consequences of that i just want to make sure that I kill Negan. Because it's going to be Negan's fault why Carl died. It's not, but, you know, he's angry and sad and wants to feel better. And that probably will not make him feel better, which we realized in, I think, at the end of season eight or the beginning of season nine, that it didn't make him feel better. Um, he knew, so he let Negan live, but, you know, kept him around hiding in a hiding place. Um, so anyway, that's how Rick changed. Um, I'm still watching it because we're still in season nine, but I thought that they did a really cool, um, you know, arc for Rick. I really enjoyed it. I liked seeing um, him, you know, kind of turn into an animal protecting his family. That's not, uh, that you know, that, that's kind of what you would expect to happen. Someone kind of like Morgan's character who, 
ends up with a form of PTSD from this whole situation of having to literally fight for your life, kill people, eat stuff that you probably would never, ever consider eating. And I thought that they did an excellent job doing so. It's definitely one of my favorite things to watch. So next is Carl. And Carl was like this, you know, this little kid, kind of doe-eyed. Um, but he really wanted to like learn how to use guns and stuff like that. Um, they grew up in the South. That's a thing. Um, so he really, and his dad's a cop, so he really wanted to learn how to, you know, use guns and help protect his family and the group and everything. Um, but he was a child. So, you know, you kind of lose your innocence when you kill somebody. So he, you know, had to kill his own mom because she was giving birth and she was going to die anyway, technically. Um, then he killed this little kid while Herschel was watching. And he did not care. And Carl also referenced that moment when he was dying. So that was kind of cool that they brought it full circle. Like he regretted it. He knew it was wrong. Um, how it had changed him and everything. And it is what it is. Um, so I thought that that was really cool too. Another character that I didn't have on my list, which I should have added, but um, I didn't quite think about it until I was watching another episode with Matt the other day. Maggie definitely has an interesting character arc too, because she was she grew up in what appeared to be a conservative Southern family. Um, her dad was Herschel. He was Loki, kind of racist, um, and like they were a Christian family. And y'all know I love God, but the way that it's depicted on TV, I guess, you know, it's kind of true to life because there are a lot of people like that, but um, they made them very conservative, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, her character had changed a lot, starting with, you know, she started sleeping around with Glenn and they became a thing and got married and everything. And she became really protect. I mean, she was always like strong. They made her character strong from the beginning, but she became like more protective, more ruthless and like a real leader throughout the show. So she basically became, you know, along with Daryl um, and Carol, you know, Rick's right hand woman, which was cool when they got to the hilltop. Um, and Megan came along and, you know, Glenn died and everything because Glenn, Glenn was like his best friend along with Daryl for a minute. Um, so, you know, once Rick did not kill Megan, who killed Glenn, uh, Maggie really felt weight about that because she wanted her revenge because her husband and the father of her child is dead, murdered. So Rick because he's in charge, everyone wants Rick to be in charge. Um, he made the call to not kill Nita. They didn't, and Maggie was pissed. So now Maggie's turned dark. So I don't know what's gonna happen after this. And I know that she gets her own spinoff, so she definitely doesn't die. So um, I'm just interested to see what happens to her character from here. Like. Does she actually betray Rick? Because it seems like that's the direction that they're going with this. Or does she change for the better? Or does she, um, you know, team up with Negan or what that's like? Because I've seen different spoilers here and there, but I don't really know exactly what's going on. So that'll be interesting. Carol also has great character development. Um, she was really like, I think the right word to use for her was docile and meek because she was abused by her husband she was a housewife and you know wasn't considered the strong type of character and you know her husband died her daughter died and like as soon as her daughter died like everything changed for carol and i think that that was a great way to you know catapult her into like the ruthless being that she became but then she went back and forth with i can't kill anybody i don't want to hurt anybody i want to be able to protect my family 
which is, you know, everybody, the gang, everybody, not necessarily blood family because her family is dead. But if I have to, you know, protect my family, I have to kill people and I don't want to kill people. Um, and then like, she has this weird relationship with children because she had a child who died. So I think that it's more of, she does, she's avoidant personality type. She doesn't want to um, get too attached to them because she's like, well, you're gonna die. You, you either have to toughen up or you're gonna die. And I think that that was her personality. And um, that's kind of like the dad's way of, not anyone's dad, but like just the, the stereotype of a dad, like you gotta toughen up and you know, if you want to survive, and this is the only way that you can do that. So that's kind of how she acts with people in general. Morgan, anybody that doesn't want to actually murder someone, people that just want to, um, you know, maim people. And that's what she has been about. So it's changed quite a bit. Um, she goes back and forth a lot with that. And um, currently she's kind of ruthless again, but now she's in a relationship with the king of the kingdom so now i'm like what kind of storyline is this and of course carol has her own spinoff now with daryl so i'm interested to see where that goes another favorite of mine is gabriel i swear that i did not think gabriel was gonna live and i think that that was the whole point of course but i thought he would have died a long 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 time ago and the reason i say that is because gabriel was a priest a lot of, um, yeah, I would say a lot of Christian people, religious people um, are for, you know, nonviolence. And it was just interesting that they made him a coward in the beginning because he let his church people die um, and become walkers or walker bait. Um, and then he became like this diehard character for the team and he was protecting people. He started learning how to shoot guns. This man carried a machete. Uh, so it was just really cool. And then he risked his life um, trying to save everybody and ended up going blind in one eye. And, you know, we didn't think that he was going to be able to see again, but it was really cool to see that he's kind of become a little bit ruthless too, but it's he's kind of using it in the name of God. And I feel the way about that. However, you want to root for him because he's one of the main characters. That's why, I mean, at the end of the day, that's why you want to root for him. You kind of feel bad for him. Um, but you're also like, yo, this guy is a priest. You can't just, you know, want a priest to die. <laughs> I know that sounds so messed up, but that's how I feel about it. So Gabriel is now like totally on on the gang's team and, you know, risk his life for people. And I just thought that that was really cool how they kind of um, made him from, you know, the lion into a lion with courage. So there's that. Next on our list, obviously, who hasn't heard about Breaking Bad? Um, Walter White was probably one of the greatest Characters that were developed ever. His arc was amazing. He turned dark very quickly to make a ton of money. Um, and he still died, which was wild. Um, so I just thought that it was amazing. I did not finish the series, but I did um, research on the series of my own and then also talking to people. And I think that that was probably one of the best ever because <laughs> it was a, like the, the pilot itself was just amazing i did watch the pilot um and the first season of it so i just thought that that was great so i don't know if he went back and forth kind of like carol from the walking dead but that was just great right off cuff so i highly encourage you if you want help learning how to write characters that you watched the, at least the first episode of Breaking Bad because it was great. So next on our list is a show that I've definitely mentioned that I've been obsessed with and I can't wait for the next season to come out is Secession, which is on HBO if you don't know. And 
the character in question is Tom, who plays the husband of Shiv. So Tom started out as this really spineless dude. Like he was, he was cool. I mean, not cool. He was, he was an a-hole. But um, Tom did not stand up for himself ever, especially not to Shiv or her dad. But he would do like this sly stuff on the side um you know to be noticed and to be picked first and everything except well he would do it to everybody but he would also do it specifically to greg who is the long lost cousin i think second cousin yeah i think he was their second cousin but regardless i was their cousin and greg was kind of doe-eyed and didn't really know what was going on and just wanted to be included in the family and make a little money um so, I mean, his character development was crazy, too. I did not have him written down, but because my favorite is Tom, but he should probably be on there, too. But we're talking about Tom, and so, you know, he went along with what his wife always wanted. They had the wedding where she wanted to have it. They had, um, you know, whenever she had a plan for trying to, you know, get her dad to notice her, to give her more work opportunities and promotions and stuff like that. He went along with every single plan, even if it threw himself under the bus, which is very trash. That's not the relationship that you want. And then um, the boss, her dad, didn't respect him anyway. So technically, no one really respected him, but they all are a-holes and they're all kind of spineless a-holes. So they're meant to be together technically but it was just interesting that he was always scared to you know advocate advocate for himself and you know stand up for himself and just do something for himself so season three blew me away you know i i did not see that twist coming at the end well we we really don't know what exactly happened but it was implied that he screwed everybody over so that he could get um the job that he wanted I can't remember. It's been a minute since I watched that episode, but he definitely screwed his wife over, Shiv. So we will see what happens next. But I'm super excited to find out, um, you know, exactly if he was the one who, who did it, because that's how it appeared that he gave everything away and, you know, got what he wanted, but no one else got what they wanted. So very cool to the writers. I loved it. He played it wonderfully. Um, and shout out to the actor. I don't remember what his name is, but I just found out that he was Mr. Darcy. <laughs> I am the one person that did not know that he was Mr. Darcy. So that's kind of funny. Another current show is This Is Us. And all of the characters have been through a lot. It's a very emotional show, very up and down, roller coaster. However, the character that I saw had the most character development was Kevin. And it was because he was very childish. He was very, um, you know, for himself. He was selfish, self-centered, vain. And I think he'll always be a little bit vain, but he's not as self-centered anymore. He's always been a little insecure. All of those bad things about people stem from insecurity. But he is more sure of himself now. He actually went for what he wanted instead of settling. He became someone worthy of getting what he wanted. So that goes hand in hand too, which is really cool. And then he also started caring about other people, which is great. He takes care of his children, his family. He makes sure that his ex-wife is good. Like she still hangs out with the family, which is really cool. And then most recent episode, he stepped up to take care of his mom who has Alzheimer's, which is very odd. I won't say very odd, but oftentimes you hear about women taking care of their parents as opposed to men. So I think that that was really awesome that he, he stepped up and did that. You know, the writers did that, of course. It was really good because now he's considered a responsible, considerate adult. And who doesn't like one of those? Next is Abbott Elementary, one of my favorites because it is so funny. It is so timely. I have been wanting to see a Black office type sitcom or I'll say Parks and Rec because I thought Parks and Rec was funnier than The Office. I'll make the rules. It was just better. So it was... um. 30 Rock. But people love The Office regardless. This is not an Office video. Anywho, 
Abbott Elementary, main character, Janine. She has been very clingy from the start, but she has made some progress. She was clingy, she was settling in life, and she knew what she wanted out of life, but she never actually completely went for it. So I was just happy to see that she, you know, let her old relationship go because it was no longer serving her the way that she thought it was. She was doing more giving and she was more ambitious in a different way and they wanted totally different things. And I was really proud that she did that. And she's not as clingy anymore. She's more comfortable with who she is and she's able to, you know, have a real relationship with Barbara without, you know, hanging on to her curtails all the time whenever she does anything and um, just not as annoying to her co-workers, but they still trash her, which is fine, but I thought that was really great. And the other character from Alpha Elementary is Ava. Ava, I think is, I think she's my favorite character on that show, to be perfectly honest. She's hilarious, she's snarky, she's sarcastic. She's very self-centered and self-serving. And I love that she started out that way, but gradually she's become more caring. And I like that they included the episode where she was actually taking care of her grandmother when she was supposed to be directing the dance competition because it wasn't like she was goofing off. She actually had a grandmother that seemed to have Alzheimer's too. So that was really cool that they showed her soft side and that she actually cares about people and takes care of people because she really does. It's just that she has a weird way of doing it. And also, you know, she, deep down, she is lazy. She is shallow, but there's more depth to her than meets the eye. All right, so Stranger Things. I really fell off from watching Stranger Things. For some reason, I was obsessed with season one and season two, but now I could care less. I don't know if it just got boring or repetitive or if, you know, the craze was over and I kind of just wanted to, you know, watch other things. However, I just stopped watching it. So it is what it is, but I did watch enough. Did I watch season three? I don't even know what season they're on. I think I watched season three as well. But the character I thought was really great was Steve Harrington. And the reason I say that is because Steve was very for himself. He was mean to the kids. They didn't deserve that. But then he became this like older brother figure to all of them, which was really cute. Like he would help, what's his name, Dustin? He helped Dustin what was it, with his hair and his clothes and stuff like that, trying to talk to a girl. Um, I thought that that was really cute and fun. And, you know, taking them under his wing and protecting them and whatnot. That was really awesome. So. I think that they did a good job developing Steve as well. I don't have a ton to say about him, except that I just enjoyed it. You guys already know that I have to add Olivia Pope onto this list. I'm obsessed with Shonda Rhimes. I am obsessed with Scandal. And I am obsessed with all of Shonda Rhimes shows, including Bridgerton and How to Get Away with Murder. So Scandal, uh, so Scandal, Olivia Pope in particular, she started out as, you know, this powerhouse character, strong black woman, didn't take anyone's BS. She took up space. She talked when she needed to talk. She was always the smartest person in the room. Everyone knew it and, you know, kind of went along with it. And that was just the most awesome thing to see specifically because black women are taught and expected to not take up space and be loud and you know prove that you are the smartest one in the room when you are of course everyone's not always going to be the smartest in the room however a lot of times people ignore us talk over us steal our answers and use it for themselves which i can attest to in engineering school but that's beside the point after Olivia was kidnapped, she became this totally different person for a minute. So she focused on helping other people to avoid focusing on her own problems. And I think that's, I think that it became more apparent in that that was the case all along, that she focused on helping other people because it made herself 
feel better. And she always wanted to work her way up to, you know, having the White House in her hand. And she really did more than once, which was pretty cool. Um, so she was more quiet going along with stuff. Fitz moved her in and she just became a totally different person. I think that after that, she kind of had this awakening like, no, you are, you know, emotionally abusing me here. I can't stay here any longer. I don't want to have your baby. I don't want to have a child at all, which is totally okay. He's everywhere. And then, you know, post the kidnapping, she became a little ruthless after she came back to her senses. She got um, revenge. She murdered a guy. That was intense. And I feel like that was just her really dark moment. And she stayed that way for a very long time. And I don't, I would say she never actually really recovered. Um, and I think that her character was always supposed to be a little bit dark. And I love that they did that. However, um, it was just, it, it was cool. I, I enjoyed it. I'll say that because she was supposed to be the savior type. But then you realize, oh, she's actually the bad guy, right? So that was kind of cool that they did it that way. I love the whole anti-hero theme. And they did an amazing job with that one because it's essentially, it's not, I, would, I mean, it's anti-hero if you're classifying characters, but it's the fact that they are, specifically what Shonda Rhimes does is present characters as if they're actually people. And I've noticed when, because I watch a lot of TV shows and a lot of movies, I've noticed that when I watch stuff, sometimes, you know, characters say and do stuff that like real people don't actually do or say. And you're like, who actually talks like this? It doesn't make sense. Like, and I know that I am not the authority on whether something's good or not. Everything is objective, but I do find myself wondering like, how come these characters aren't whole people? So I appreciate that Shonda and the Shondaland team did that, brought the characters to life, made them whole, real people and complex people. And I just loved it. They did an amazing job. So kudos to them. Shonda, I love you. If you're watching this, you're probably not. You're definitely not because you're too busy. But I would love to work for you one day. Shoot my shot. That's okay. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. And I hope that you subscribe because I like putting out this stuff. If you enjoy film, TV, photography, random stuff, cleaning videos, self-care days, all the shenanigans this is a place for you hopefully i'd love to have you here and share with a friend if you really enjoyed it as well someone that might enjoy this kind of content too let me know in the comments if you liked it let me know if you want to see more of these or what else you want to see on my channel i am always open to feedback and i hope that you guys come for another one thanks so much for watching and i'll talk to you soon Bye.